this video we're gonna talk about the physiology of circulation and specifically local control of the circulation characteristic of vascular smooth muscle myogenic humoral hormonal and neural control mechanism behind this local control of circulation physiological vasoconstrictors and physiological vasodilators let's start in the first video in the first uh, slide we're gonna talk about the local control and specifically autoregulation as you can see in the graph if the pressure increase the flow will increase as well but in vital organs such as kidney heart uh, brain there is a autoregulation to keep the flow in a constant level so it means that if the pressure comes below a number there will be some uh, um, uh, effect to increase it to increase the flow and if the pressure goes high there should be some autoregulation to bring it that so they maintain the constant blood flow to an organ despite change in art arterial pressure the second thing is they are only applicable when uh, the pressure is not too high or not too low so in case of shock which is uh, which the blood pressure is very low or in case of very high blood pressure for example above 250 220 uh, this auto regulation will not work perfectly uh, the mechanism is by dilating and constricting of a smooth muscle inside the small arteries and arterioles uh, which have a myogenic tone myogenic myo means muscle so there is a tone of muscle around this vascular component so they can have this auto regulation the vascular smooth muscle cells in the small arteries not arterioles uh, they only get sympathetic innervation sympathetic innervation we are the alpha one which can cause vasoconstriction and beta 2 receptor which can cause vasodilation and there is no sympathetic uh, effect here on uh, for uh, the sympathetic uh, so there is only sympathetic no parasympathetic only sympathetic uh, so local effect what is this local effect first we have myogenic response that i already mentioned about this myogenic tone and how does it work so we have tension which is constant so in each uh, 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 for example uh, vessel uh, arteries uh, arterioles uh, there is a constant tension which is equal to the pressure times radius so if the pressure goes up radius should goes down to have a same tension so uh, let me explain it in this graph as you can see if the smooth muscle cell uh, stretch we are increasing blood pressure there the contraction pressure will goes up and cation channel will stretch we are the mechanosensitive channels so depolarization is happening when the depolarization is happening l-type calcium channel will activate it and when this l-type calcium channel activated they increase the intracellular level of the calcium ion so intracellular level of calcium increase we have a muscle contraction and we call it myogenic response so when muscle contract the, the vessel radi radius will decrease so we have vasoconstriction radius decrease when the radius decrease resistance increase and when the resistance increase flow decrease and in the opposite way when uh, the blood pressure goes down the radius will go up resistance comes down and flow increase it's exactly opposite than what we explain in this graph what is the metabolite regulation the second type of local regulation is the metabolic regulation so precapillary sphincters the smooth muscle of arterioles the, the smooth muscle are here precapillary is here and the meta arterioles which is here they don't have any sympathetic innervation so sympathetic innervation is only for a small arteries uh, and the, these three they only get local control so how do they understand when to contract so they are some metabolite that inside uh, our body that they can affect uh, as a vasodilator metabolites for example it's very logical if the o2 oxygen which is needed by the cells to work decrease there should be an increase in the size of the vessel so more oxygen can come in so if the o2, uh, o2 pressure 
goes down, there will be a vasodilation. CO2 and lactic acid are the product of the cell. They are waste products. So when they increase, it means that the work of the cell increase and they should leave the tissue immediately uh, to uh, because they cause a problem if they stay in a tissue. So there should be a vasodilation and pH decrease. So pH is exactly uh, because of this lactic acid. So when the lactic acid made by the uh, cells inside the tissue lactic acid will increase and lactic acid is acidic so pH will decrease adenosine is also because of the ATP so when the adenosine increase uh, it means that there is more um, metabolite inside the cell and they can cause vasodilation also potassium potassium increase there should be removed by the tissue so vasodilation happen however sensitivity to this metabolites vary by the region for example in case of the pco2 like the uh, carbon dioxide it's very important in the brain so if they uh, uh, detect that the co2 increase vasodilation happen very fast uh, there are two uh, things that we need to know when we talk about the metabolite regulation first we have something called functional hyperemia or active hyperemia so if the cell function increase metab metabolism will increase and metabolites such as lactic acid and uh, carbon dioxide will increase so vasodilation happen in the reactive type so active is something that is normal reactive is actually something that doesn't very really make sense but it actually makes sense so uh, reactive hyperemia is a period of decreasing blood flow which can cause increase in blood flow how does it work it exactly the same as like oxygen level decrease so when the oxygen level increase decrease there will be a vasodilation so increase in blood flow is proportional to the time that flow was occluded so flow occluded so metabolite will build up behind this occlusion so co2 increase uh, lactic acid increase and they can cause vasodilation so flow is increased when this flow increase the flow will wash away all this metabolite so when all of the all of these metabolites wash away the flow go back to its normal condition because all the metabolite which cause uh, vasodilation removed from that tissue uh, so what is the endothelial regulation endothelial of the vessels they can regulate the cons uh, the size of the vessel how so if the cell work increase there will be more exchange so co2 will increase lactic acid will increase uh, and they can cause increase decrease in resistance and increase on the flow but how so when uh, and demand of the cell increase there should be more blood comes to that region so shear stress will increase when this shear stress increase because the radius decrease uh, endothelial cell will activate it and when they activate it they will produce nitrous oxide or nitric oxide nitric oxide is a vasodilator so they can cause vasodilation of the vessel so when the vasodilation happen the flow increase but how does this nitric oxide cause vasodilation we explain it here so we have two different type of vasodilator one of them is nitric oxide the other one is prostaglandin i2 so nitric oxide cause increase in the cgmp level so cgmp activate cgmp protein kinase so they will activate it and a smooth muscle will relax please know this pathway by heart and um, prostaglandin i2 so they will activate gs and gs activate g p, uh, g coupled protein and they increase camp when the camp level increase pka protein kinase a increase and we are the phosphodiesterase uh, the phosphorylation of the myosin light chain kinase will happen and a smooth muscle will relax you already studied this g couple proteins mechanism in your lecture about the g protein couple and the important thing here is that if one of the cell uh, for example nitric oxide released from one of these cells uh, they can uh, this vasodilation can go cell to cell by the gap junction and the entire tissue can vasodilate uh, so what is the humoral factors 
Uh, for humor of factors, this is very important when you want to explain your topic about the vasodilator and vasoconstrictors. You have to mention them. So humoral factors are histamine and serotonin and some others, but you need to know these two. Histamine and serotonin can cause endothelial cell activation. So when the endothelial cell activated, they will produce nitric oxide and nitric oxide, we explained, they can cause vasodilation. And vasoconstrictor are one of them is endothelin. You have to know that endothelin cause vasoconstriction via the humoral factors. Humoral factor is the local factor. For example, one cell release it and it affects on the other cell in the same tissue. Uh, so this is hu uh, humoral. Uh, so endothelin and angiotensin 2, we're going to talk about the angiotensin 2 more in the renal topics. Uh, and hormonal regulation. So humoral means one cell in tissue affect on the other cell in the same tissue, but hormonal regulation means like from other tissue, some uh, products, some hormones may, and they go to the blood, and they go to another organ to, to affect on that organ. For example, um, uh, epinephrine release from the adrenal gland, and they go to the blood, and they affect on the other organs. So hormonal regulation, they affect on the smooth muscle. And what are them? Va vasoconstrictors, they have some vasoconstrictor, norepinephrine. Norepinephrine mostly affect on the alpha-1 adrogenic receptors and they activate g coupled q protein. g coupled q increase calcium inside the cell. Whenever that the calcium inside the cell increase, we have a muscle contraction and uh, consequently uh, vasoconstriction. Angiotensin 2 will activate it angiotensin 1 receptor via G coupled Q protein and same thing happen a vasopre vasopressin or ADH hormone which is the other name uh, they affect on two type of receptor V1 and V2 V1 is uh, on the all vascular smooth muscle a smooth muscle not endothelium a smooth muscle so V1 uh, cause activation of the GQ and they can cause vasoconstriction. V2 is only in the kidney in the collecting duct and they can increase the water reabsorption. So less water uh, leave our body and they go back to the circulation so they can increase the preload and increase arterial blood pressure. We will discuss the angiotensin 2 and vasopressin in the slide of uh, renal uh, uh, and kidney. Uh, histamine and serotonin, we already discussed about them. They also affect on the GQ uh, coupled protein and activated cal increased calcium and vasoconstriction. Endothelin, we also discussed it in uh, humoral and hormonal. Is, uh, th their effect is same as humoral. So they can be both hormonal and humoral. So uh, it's not just a specific to one of them. Hormonal regulation, but vasodilator. We have epinephrine, which is released from the adrenal gland, and they affect on the beta-2 receptor. Please, please, please memorize this. Norepinephrine in a physiological concentration. We have also more than physiological concentration, which is used in the clinic, which is used in the hospitals. But inside the body, when norepinephrine release, they affect on the alpha-1 receptor, and they can cause... Uh, vasoconstriction but epinephrine affect mostly on beta 2 receptor so they can cause vasodilation so gs couple the way that they act is they affect on the gs couple then camp protein kinase a and they dephosphorylate of myosin light and uh, light chain kinase and they cause a smooth muscle relaxation we already studied them in your g coupled lectures so it is very important if epinephrine concentration is very high, for example, as I explained, in case of the uh, uh, mm, those that we use in the hospital, they can. If uh, the concentration is very high, beta two receptor will be saturated, and then they will affect on the alpha one receptors. Uh, so uh, they can cause uh, contraction in high doses. That's why I want to give you an example to, for better understanding. For example, in case of anaphylactic reaction, so what's what's going to happen? The pain and the vasodilation inside the vessel happening. So we give epinephrine. Epinephrine causes vasoconstriction because it's in a huge number and they can activate all the uh, alpha-1 receptor vasoconstriction, but they can also affect on the bronchol 
uh, on the uh, um, tr um, bronchus uh, and the bronchioles and they can cause uh, bronchodilation so patient can breathe so when you mm, give the patient epinephrine there is a constriction of the vessel because of the effect on the alpha 1 receptor and uh, uh, they also affect on the beta 2 receptor on the uh, uh, respiratory system uh, so but but in physiological mm, just remember it this way in physiological concentration epinephrine effect on beta 2 and norepinephrine effect on alpha 1 alpha 1 vasoconstriction beta 2 vasodilation uh, ANP or at, uh, atrial uh, uh, not uh, peptide. Uh, I'm sorry if uh, my pronunciation is not correct. Uh, they produce by uh, atrium inside the heart, and they respond to increase the preload. So if the preload increase, they cause vasodilation to decrease the blood pressure to decrease the preload. So the effect on the CGMP is they can cause protein kinase G activated and they cause a smooth muscle relaxation. We also have BNP. BNP release from the ventricles. Uh, BNP usually used in a clinic for detecting heart failure. You, here you just need to know ANP, but if your teacher asks about the BNP, just know that it's same as ANP, but released by the ventricle. Uh, and we have prostaglandin I2. The work is same as like CGMP, protein kinase G, and a small muscle relaxation. We explained it in the previous slide. And five, we have neurological regulation. As we explained, sympathetic innervation effect on the uh, smo uh, vascular uh, smooth muscle. And this is very important in case of the skin and uh, skeletal muscle. We're going to explain about the skin and uh, skeletal muscle circulation in details in our future videos. Uh, but you have to know that the sympathetic is not very important in case of regulation of the coronary, cerebral, pulmonary, or renal circulation because they are vital organs and they will... Uh, they should have a constant blood flow all the time. So autoregulation has the huge uh, job there. But like in case of a skin, for example, you can feel that uh, when you feel that your body is warm, uh, the circulation uh, inside your skin will increase to exchange uh, temperature. Uh, and a skeletal muscle is depend if your body is in an active situation or it's not in an active situation. So these two controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. Thank you very much.